Hello, my name is Clément Escoffier, and in this video, I'm going to present the gRPC support that has been added in Quarkus 1.5. But first, what is gRPC? gRPC is defined as a high-performance open-source universal RPC mechanism. RPC meaning remote procedure call. You can find more information about gRPC on gRPC.io. Basically, it's a great protocol in microservices if you want to do an RPC-based interaction, meaning that you want to call methods uh, from some other service. gRPC is generally based on HTTP2, so it's quite fast, and is using a protobuf encoding to uh, reduce and to have a very efficient way to exchange uh, messages. It also supports streaming in addition as plain method invocation. How does it work? First, you are going to write a proto file which will describe your service. Inside this proto file, you will describe the structures you want to exchange, the methods, and things like that. This proto file is going to be uh, analyzed and processed by a proto compiler, proto C, that will generate a bunch of classes, both for the clients, so stubs, and also for the server base implementations. In Quarkus, we support the base model from gRPC, but also a Mutiny-based model, and Mutiny being our reactive programming library we are uh, using in, in Quarkus. Enough presentation about gRPC. It's time to show you some code, and in these videos, I'm going to reuse one of my favorite demos, which is the SUPS demo. So in this demo, we have a sub service which is connected to a Mongo database. This interaction uses a Panache a Mongo with its reactive features. Thanks to Mongo with Panache, it's easy to retrieve documents that has been stored in Mongo. Uh, typically here, we are going to retrieve heroes and villains. Each heroes and villains has a name, level, and pictures, and so on. We are going to expose the first gRPC service that let us pick a random hero and a random villain. This service is going to be consumed by the fight service, and this fight service is going to invoke the sub service twice to get a an hero and a villain, and will uh, simulate a fight and uh, compute the outcome. While this fight service is also a gRPC service, uh, because we wanted to, to keep this video short, it's going to be consumed locally um, inside the same service and exposed uh, using the uh, REST endpoint. Then we have a simple UI that lets us trigger fights and see who uh, are the winners. As I said, the first thing you need to do to use gRPC is to write proto files. So, here we have three proto files, but in its first service, we are going to use two of them. The first one is the supes.proto that is presented here, and that defines the messages that are going to be exchanged. So here, heroes, villains, and an empty message uh, that is named empty. Then we have the service per se, which is a sub service with two methods, get random hero and get random villains, which return uh, any heroes and a villains accordingly. Inside my sub service uh, implementation, it's a Quarkus project. I'm just using the gRPC extensions. And as I said, it's going Mongo with Panache and the reactive features from Mongo with Panache to interact with a pre populated Mongo database. So here we have the hero class that um, contains a document from the heroes collections. It has a name, levels, image, and this uh, simple find random, which get a random hero. We have the villain's counterpart, which is exactly the same, except that it uh, retrieves the documents from the villain's uh, collections. Let's have now look to the, our subservice implementations. A gRPC service in Quarkus, it's a bin, a CDI bin that need to be uh, in the singleton scope. Why? It's because gRPC types that has been generated by protocies cannot be proxied uh, easily. So we just use singleton. Then you need to extend your base implementations. So here I'm going to extend uh, the mutiny uh, service implementations. You can also use the bare one, the one provided by gRPC, but because 
we want to do RPC and asynchronous and reactive make a lot of sense for such kind of things, I'm going to use Mutiny. Once I have extended my class, I can override uh, my two methods, get random heroes and get random villains. So both are returning Mutiny types, here unis, because we have a single result, but we will see later that when we use trimmings, we will return multis. So here, thanks to uh, Mongo with Panache, I can just do hero dot find random. And once I get my random hero, I will apply um, a create hero, the create hero method. And this method is using the gRPC API to create uh, gRPC heroes. Um, and gRPC is using a lot of builders. So we got our generated class, the builder for the generated class, and we set the various parameters, and then we build. We can return this, and I'm going to do the same thing for the second method, except that it's for the bad guys, and here it's for this. Okay, so now our service is ready. Um, as everything in Quarkus, things are configured in uh, the application properties, and I'm going to start the gRPC servers on the port 9001. Uh, By default, we use 9000, uh, but here I wanted to show you how it can be configured. So let's go back here and start our service. Okay, should be started in a few seconds. So I'm going to use the dev mode, and here we see it has been started with gRPC client, gRPC servers. Uh, so our gRPC features has been enabled. I want to try my service, and I still didn't implement the file service. Fortunately, uh, the Quarkus gRPC supports come with a reflection uh, service uh, implemented and enabled in dev mode. So then you can use tools like gRPC curl or gRP curl. Um, to list the services that are exposed by our server. So here we have two, we have our subservice and the health service. Because gRPC also defines its own health mechanism, uh, we enable it automatically. And note that it's also integrated with the Quarkus health mechanism. So it's already reported and things like that. So we are interested by this service here. So let's have a look, what do we have inside? We have two methods, get random hero and get random villains, which is good because that's what we expect. And let's call them. So I need to uh, remove the list here. And here we go. I got a random hero, so that looks good. And let's try for random villain. And we got uh, a bad guys now. So. It works already, and we can start it uh, debugging out, uh, extending our service like this. So it's uh, pretty easy to use thanks to the reflection service. This gRPC reflection service is enabled by default in dev mode, but disabled in pod mode, so or in native mode. So you will have to enable it explicitly if you still want to use it. Let's not switch to the second gRPC service we want to implement, the fight service. Remember, the fight service is going to compute the outcome of fights between a hero and a villain. So the implementation is going to use the subservice to retrieve a random heroes and a random villains and compute the outcomes and send that as a result. So this is the proto files related to this service. So we have two methods here. We have this first fight service, that button of fight, and we have the second one, which is which is named fight streams, which return a stream of fights. So periodically, it's going to uh, generate some fights. A fight is a villain, a hero, and a winner, which is just the name of the ones that won. Let's now switch to the fight service implementation. I already started, but not everything is in place, so we need to uh, continue it. The first thing I'm going to do is to inject the uh, fight as a subservice. So to consume a gRPC service, I'm going to inject it by using inject, then a qualifier named gRPC service. I pass a name, subservice, and then it should be the stub uh, that I'm going to use. So here, mutiny sub gRPC stub. 
Oh, and I will call that use. This uh, uh, gRPC service qualifier and this name are actually as a link to the configuration. So if we switch to the configuration inside my application.properties here, we see that the gRPC client's name soup service uh, is using the service on localhost and on port 9001. You can also configure every other attribute such as the certificates and things like that. Now, uh, that the service is injected, I can start using it and implement my first method, which is fight. So I need to call the sub service twice. Let's call it uh, uh, once. So I will get a VLAN. So this is going to return a uni to get a VLAN. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing to get the error. Get random error. Okay. And then I need to combine both results, but both are going to be executed concurrently. So I don't know when they come back. So I will create a new uni, which comes from the combination of these two uni, so hero and villain. I want to uh, aggregate those results as a topper because then it's easier to use. And once I got both, I'm going to call the fight service. So here I get my topper and I will go or fight, uh, my fight method that is here. We will uh, see it in a few minutes. Uh, and here I need my hero, which is my first item, and my uh, uh, villain, which is my second item. I'm going to return this, and that's it. So let's have a look to this fight service. There is nothing really interesting in it. Uh, it just do some random um, outcome of who is going to win, and and that's it. And return the uh, the new uh, the um, results, so the fight, uh, the gRPC fight construct. Let's now have a look to this uh, stream one. So here we are not going to return a uni, but return a multi. And let's say that every second we want to generate um, a multi. So I'm going to to do this. Create from uh, ticks every, uh, we say it once again, and every time that I have a ticks, I'm going to call the fight method. So let's call it fight, and that's it. And then I want to build my stream by concatenating all those results. I'm going to return this, and here it is. So let's test this. So I'm going to start it again. In dev mode, uh, my sub service is still running on port 9001. This one is going to be exposed on port 9000. So, here PC curl. Uh, let's be sure it's there. So, I will first do a list. Here it is. So, we still have health and the fight service. Let's have a look what do we have inside the fight service to be sure that we have our two methods. We have our two methods. So, let's now uh, invoke them. To be sure that they work. Uh, the first one is a uh, fight. Perfect. So it's got a fight between Voldemort and Atom 2 and Voldemort 1. Okay. Uh, another one, uh, the Enchantress and Mr. Terrific and the Enchantress 1. Cool. So now let's do a, a stream and see what it how it works. And now every second is generate a new fight. So every second is going to invoke the subservice twice, get both results, compute the outcome, and send that back. And it seems to work very well. Let's not switch to the last part, uh, which is a simple JAX-RS resource that will invoke the fight service and uh, send the result of the fight. So trigger a fight and send the result uh, to a web page. Even if in this demo, the fight resource and the fight service are inside the same applications in uh, the real world, it will be separate entities. So I've decided to inject my gRPC service as we have seen in the previous example. So here it's named fight service. It's been configured to use localhost on port 9000. And I'm just calling it uh, directly in my JAX-RS resource.
One thing that is a little bit tricky is that uh, gRPC classes cannot be uh, serialized directly to JSON, neither with JSONB or Jackson. So you need to write some kind of customizer. Um, this code is available online. So if you want to do the same, just copy and paste. You just drop most of the things that are gRPC related and we don't need in our uh, uh, JSON uh, document we send to the applications. So let's have a look to the web page. Here it is. Um, simple web page that invokes this JAXRS uh, resource uh, using Ajax and then um, a, uh, calls the file service, which itself calls the subservice and so on. So we can click on the fight button and generate some fight and see who is going to win. That's all I have. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. So a few other information about uh, about this. First, even if this demo is using a plain text, it also works with TLS, obviously. Uh, there is a quick start that has been created to demonstrate how it can be used. Um, all uh, the gRPC support works uh, with native, so all my services can be compiled to native. Um, again, there is a quick start explaining how to do this. Uh, the gRPC uh, support in Quarkus uh, is based on Netty and Vertex, so that's why it's uh, reactive by nature, even if you can still use the blocking model if you want to. Um, and if you have questions about these demos, uh, first you can find the source online. Uh, and if you have questions, you can uh, ping me on the leap or send an email to the Quarkus uh, mailing list. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.